Uh, today in this part we will be describing the software defined radio architectures. So before starting that let us look at the radio requirements and specification. Basically uh, we have two components uh, transmitter and receiver and they are the main uh, uh, required uh, equipment for uh, wireless communication. So for the transmitter you require a spurious emission level control. It means you have to keep the distorted signal extra component from the main area uh, and you have to keep them from coming to the uh, neighborhood uh, areas in the frequency domain and there are some regulatory uh, bodies which keep a tab on this they try to control it. So, uh, transmitter has to look into it. Moreover, transmitter uh, apart from uh, modulation, up conversion and transmission it has to also control the power level because the signal has to travel to a distance. So, it should be able to give the sufficient power. So, that, that should be uh, part of transmitter. In the receiver side there are two main criteria. one is uh, sensitivity another is selectivity. Sensitivity means maintaining input power level so that our ADC is able to detect the signal in log domain properly and it is able to convert it into digital domain. Selectivity allows to capture the proper signal among so many signals in another frequencies. While it should be able to allow the signal which we want at a particular band, it should be able to reject the others which we do not want. So, these two requirements for the receiver apart from these transmitter and receiver they should be uh, synchronized, they should know what are the operating frequencies they are working on and based on that they will be choosing their filters and other component. Now, before going into the details of architecture, uh, let us look at the hardware components which will be used in these architectures. First of all, of course, it is software defined radio. So, digital signal processor is a part of the system. Digital signal processor is a system where after the down conversion and in digitization you have digital data, you do the all the processing, all the coding is happening in this domain. So, some of the examples can be your personal computer, your laptop. FPGAs uh, are there, there are some leading companies uh, for example uh, from analog devices there was a shark, shark based uh, DSP processor then uh, you have uh, ARM Cortex 8, Cortex 4 these series are for the DSPs and recently GNU radio is has been also very popular where actually the uh, it is using the universal software radio peripheral by using a FPGA, but all the processing happening in this uh, peripheral outside the FPGA. It is very fast, it is allowed, it is uh, able to give you very high speeds. Now, uh, apart from this, the next component will be RF mixers. If you look at this uh, diagram, it is showing the RF mixer here. RF mixer is basically a nonlinear component. Whenever uh, it has two inputs which are sinusoidal in nature, their outputs have the frequencies which are either summation or subtraction of these two frequencies. So, how it happens actually? It allows the multiplication of these two sinusoidals. So, if you look at the word trigonometric formula here, the multiplication of two sinusoidals they provide us the cosine component which is the difference of these two frequencies and the summation of these two frequencies. So, at the output we can either choose w1 minus w2 the frequency difference or the summation of the frequency. Similarly, for uh, other combination of sin and cosine we always have this kind of components. So, in case of up conversion in the transmitter which is shown in the uh, right hand side figure here, when you applied our LO signal and RS signal is uh, applied also then from the IF level it has the output which is LO plus IF frequency or LO minus IF frequency. Apart from that it will also have the frequency which are IF minus LO, but those frequency will be on the negative side. So, they will not appear here also they will be a part of the system. So, they will not appear in the system. So, if you look at this diagram uh, this is the LO signal and RF 2 which is the summation it is appearing here and the subtraction is appearing in the uh, left hand side. Based on our requirement both of them contain the same information. So, we can put a particular filter and we can down convert it, uh, we can select and then 
use it. Similarly, in the receiver side, when we already have RF signal and we want to take it back to the baseband level, then we apply a LO. The output will be either summation or the subtraction. So, subtraction will bring it near to the baseband levels. The addition will be on the right hand side of this LO and it will be filtered out, it will be at high frequency. So, in this way we are able to get our signal at a, a baseband level. If our LO is equal to RF, our frequencies are same for LO and RF, in that case this signal will come directly at the DC level which is the baseband with 0 frequency, 0 IF. So, based on these choosing IF or not choosing IF gives us the homodyne or superheterodyne architecture which we will be discussing uh, later. As we have seen earlier, filters are very uh, much the part of the system, they can be low pass or band pass. If we are looking at the system when it is very near to the DC which is baseband, uh, mostly we use the low pass filters and in the RF domain mostly we are using the band pass filter designed for that particular application. Now, filters can be digital in nature, they can be resonators or uh, they can be uh, band pass filter in the RF domain. So, depending on the application and the domain, we, they can be uh, created and applied. Power amplifiers are uh, very important part of this system because they allow the signal to be amplified to a particular power level. So, in that case, basically we have different classes of power amplifiers, some of them are very linear like class A, but it does not provide very good output power. Then uh, very high output power basically and, and efficiency also. Then we have class B, C, D, E, F which are uh, D, E, F are basically switchboard power amplifiers. We will be discussing some of the uh, these later and we will be also discussing the limitation of this particular component, but uh, for the time being let us go to the circulator or the diplexer. Now, circulator or diplexer, it allows the directional communication over a single path. So, here uh, we can see the circulator which is being used for the same frequency at the transmitter and receiver. So, we can see we have three ports here, port 1, port 2, port 3. These circulators are basically made of uh, some ferrite elements and whenever you apply any signal at port 1 it passes to the next port, but it does not pass to the next to next port. So, basically it will allow anything to pass to the next, but nothing will go here. So, uh, the S21 will be uh, low here and uh, uh, sorry S21 which is, which, is, which is the which is allowing to pass the signal is high here and in this case the insulation will be high. So, signal will not be going to here. So, how can we use the circulator? in a system of a transmitter and receiver. This is the circulator and this is the direction of circulation port 1, port 2, port 3. So, let us say it is the R x and it is the T x port. So, all the T x circuitry is connected here and all the R x circuitry is connected here and here is the antenna. Now, this antenna is working uh, at the frequency of F c for R x as well as frequency of F c for transmitter T x. Whenever a signal is coming here, it will allow that signal to go here. So, it will pass to receiver, but the same signal cannot go here because it is, it is not allowed by the circulator. So, it will allow signal to come here. Similarly, whenever any signal is being sent from the transmitter here, by this direction it will allow it to go here, but it will not allow it to go here. So, the signal will be passed to the antenna and it is able to transmit. So, the same antenna can be used for the transmitter and receivers. Now, it was the example when it was at the same frequency. Suppose uh, we have a signal which is at different frequencies. So, here if you look at the, the diagram, the diplexer come into picture which is basically a filter bank. So, because our transmitter and receiver, they are at a different frequencies. So, whenever a transmitter is working, it will allow the signal to go to antenna and whenever uh, the signal is receive, being received by the receiver, then the other filter will be acting because the first filter will be 
closing uh, that signal will, will be blocking that signal. So, simple diplexer, simple filter bank will be useful there, but at the same frequency we may have to use circulator. Now, digital to analog converters and analog to digital converters they are very much required in a software defined radio and those are the parts which we cannot remove because they are the uh, conversion threshold components basically. So, uh, if you look at this diagram D 2 A and A 2 D basically they are converting this bit information back into the amplitude for D 2 A and this amplitude uh, uh, information back to bits for for A 2 D converter. So, in this case uh, we are taking we are ta have taken the example of simple sinusoidal which looks as, as, as a single carrier at the frequency domain. If we want to quantize this with the 8 level then how many bits we should have 2 to the power 3 because we have 2 states 0 and 1. So, uh, if you apply your logic you should have 2 to the power 3 8 levels for 16 levels you should have 2 to the power 4 means you will be using 4 bits to uh, provide that uh, quantization. Now, in this case when you see this step kind of function you can see that there is a discontinuity here and quantization noise is coming from this step here. So, lower bit means you will have more high quantization noise, higher bits means you will have finer quantization and lower quantization noise. Apart from the quantization noise uh, in the system we also have temperature and environmental uh, noise. So, based on that we define the SNR which is signal to noise ratio. Now, signal to noise ratio is mostly defined for a single carrier signal. Uh, in the lower diagram you can see that we are showing a single fundamental signal here, uh, it is sinusoidal signal and this is the noise level because of the temperature and the quantization noise etcetera. Then the ratio of these two power levels they are called the signal to noise ratio in the voltage. So, this amplitude can be voltage, this can also be dB if you are doing uh, you are converting it back into uh, decibels. So, in dB what you will do 10 log 10 of that voltage will be basically be in dB. So, that you can represent there mostly it is represented in terms of power. So, it is 20 log 10 instead 20 log 10 of that voltage. Apart from SNR uh, the another uh, parameter is SNDR it is also called SINAD or SFDR, it is signal to noise and distortion ratio. So, noise is one thing which is constantly there, but apart from there sometimes there is per coming from sampling process or, uh, or you know uh, not perfect filters, then it is the effective dynamic range. It is also called SFDR which is spurious free dynamic range, it is called uh, signal to noise and distortion ratio also. So, all these are the name for the same thing. Now, SNR for a system uh, this is this is a thumb rule for calculating the number of bits which will give you SNR. So, 6.02 times number of bits plus 1.76 dB. For example, if I say I have 12 bit A to D and what is the SNR uh, best SNR I can get from this. So, if n if n is equal to 12 bits so, SNR you can calculate in dB and it will be 6.02 into 12 and 1.76. So, what is what it will become? Seventy four in dB. So, for 12 bit this is the system. Now, this is the SNR sometimes it is asked that what will be SNDR or based on the SN, SNDR what will be the effective bits here. So, effective bits can be given uh, by the SNDR. So, for example, if I say uh, there is a distortion component which is 12 dB above the noise level then what will be the 
uh, effective number of bits. So, let us do calculation for that. Component is 12 dB above noise level. So, what does it mean? That if your signal it was your noise and this was 74 that spurious component is 12 dB above the noise level. It means spurious free range will be 74 S and D R becomes 74 minus 12 it will be 62 dB. So, number of effective bits from here uh, again from this uh, formula we can calculate it, it will be 62 minus 1.76 divided by 6.02. So, it will be approximately 10, 10 bits. So, we have 12 bit system, but it is effective as good as 10 bit system. Now, uh, once we have looked at these components, let us go to the architecture of the transmitter and receivers. Mainly, there are two types of architecture, one is called super heterodyne which is also called IF convergent transmitter, uh, in the receiver also it is called IF convergent uh, receivers. In homodyne, we have uh, names such as direct convergent transmitter and receivers. There are some other names such as uh, synchrodyne and zero IF transmitter which are used for the homodyne. Then there will be some architecture which can be combination of these two or motivated by these two architectures. So, let us have a look at these architectures. So, superheterodyne architecture uh, transceiver is shown in this uh, figure. In DSP, you have your bits, you have uh, put uh, them in symbols and then you have modulated them, uh, before that you have encoded them. Then you have done the digital to analog conversion for both I and Q branches and as we have discussed before that we have to, uh, we have a complex data I plus GQ which we have to modulate using a local oscillator in a system. Now, in superheterodyne transceiver, we have two stages of up conversion. First of all, LO1, which, which up converts this information to the frequency, intermediate frequency. After that, you have bandpass filter, which removes all the spurious and keeps only this information at that particular LO1 frequency. And then you have second level of up conversion, LO2. So, in this case, what will be the uh, RF frequency? So, the RF frequency for super heterodyne case F RF will be basically F LO1 plus F LO2. So, we have dual conversion there. Once this data is uh, transmitted by transmitter, if this is a separate receiver somewhere, it travels through the media and then we required a low noise amplifier so that we can have a good sensitivity at the receiver, it have sufficient amplitude. This signal is again bent passed. Why? Because there might be other signals coming from some other sources uh, nearby this frequency. Now, we have a signal which is at LO2 plus LO1. So, you use signal LO2 for the down conversion, bend pass it and then LO1, again you have two stages here. So, if you have single transmitter and receiver, then basically you have single antenna which is uh, shown by this red color diagram. In this case, this uh, circulator it is allowing both TX and RX to work simultaneously by selecting their paths, the transmission uh, remains the same. So, in this case, here uh, we are showing a case where this is the RF signal which we want to transmit and receive eventually at the receiver, but there is a signal which is appearing here. This signal which is appearing here, it is called MA signal. The definition of this MA signal is the signal which is falling at a frequency which will eventually fall at the IF frequency when down converted. So, what does it, uh, what do we mean by this? Uh, suppose we have a signal at RF 
um, let us say LO2 is 1 gigahertz and this RF is at 1.1 gigahertz. The image signal is someone which will be at this frequency because when it will meet with this frequency it will give us 0.1 gigahertz which is the same frequency which we will achieve with our required signal by beating this two we are also getting 0.1 gigahertz and at IF level they both will fall on on top of each other which we do not uh, want. Similarly, there is another case whenever RF is at uh, minus IF distance from the LO and the image is falling at the another. In this case also your image and the signal will fall on top of each other. We want to avoid this. So, what can we do? We can choose our LO properly. This case will be more clear once we have the idea of the homodern receiver or 0 F transceiver. So, in this case uh, all the components are similar to the heterodyne case but we can see that there is only one LO1. So, super heterodyne architecture FRF is FLO1 plus FLO2 and homodyne architecture will have FRF basically as FLO1 which is the single frequency available there. So, again if they are to separate uh, transmitter receivers uh, they have separate antenna so otherwise you can use single antenna with the circulator. Now, what will happen in this case? In this case this grey signal is our required signal and this red color signals are representing the other signal distorted signal which we do not require which are not what we are looking for. So, we put a band pass uh, filter low pass is sufficient for the uh, homodyne case and we are able to get our signal back, uh, back. So, what is the uh, loophole here? What, is, what are the good and bad points about uh, these two architecture? Uh, it can be understood by one example. So, let us say this is our frequency range and our signal which we are receiving at our antenna. The signal we we want to actually work with is at 880 megahertz and there is a signal at 860 megahertz which is image signal or a signal which we do not want. Now, it is a RS signal and our filters they are practically not very sharp. So, let us say we have band pass filters with a range of 30 megahertz effective bandwidth. So, what will happen if it is a homodyne case? This FRF is our FLO in homodyne case. So, the signal this will be down converted there. So, we will have components such as 880 minus 880 megahertz, which is because of We will have component as 880 plus 880, which is because of FRF plus FLO. We will have signal as 880 minus 860, because now this component is also here, which we can avo not avoid because our filter is not stopping them. F image uh, minus of image plus FLO 
then we will have 880 which is again summation of FIM plus FLO. So, we can see from here it will fall at 0 frequency or DC, it can be filtered because it is very high frequency and our uh, signal band pass or we can say low pass, they, it is 30 megahertz in the range, it is very high for that. So, anyhow it will go away, this will be 20 megahertz. So, it will be there and it will can again be filtered, right. So, we have these two signals. So, in frequency domain basically after down conversion in this homodyne structure, the required RF signal will be falling here and our filter has a range of 30 megahertz. It will be this is the 30 megahertz range and the other signal which we do not want it is falling here. So, our filters are not removing it, so it will be a problem there. Now, in the heterodyne case, we can choose our LO. So, how can we choose our LO? Let us say heterodyne case, and we choose our LO to be equal to 870. Right. So, what components we will have from here? If you do the summation and subtraction, both of them are at 10 megahertz distance, right. So, what will happen? We will have RF here and we will have our image signal also here, right, on top of each other and this will be our filter. So, not required, this allo is not good at all. What we can do, we can actually select a range for which it is, it will not be good. If we select our LO in this direction, let us say um, LO one gigahertz, then it will have components such as twenty megahertz, and from here it will be. 40 megahertz. So, in the frequency domain, it will be our filter which has 30 megahertz range and 20 megahertz signal will be here and the another will be at 40 which will be not used by uh, which will be compressed uh, which will be uh, stopped by our bandpass filter. Moreover, if we uh, make it more far let us say 1.2 it will be even further and our band pass filter, low pass filter will completely stop it. So, by choosing our allo properly, we will be able to get our signal back. So, this is the advantage of the heterodyne system based uh, over the homodyne system, it is more flexible by choosing a allo properly, we can uh, select our uh, signal and we can uh, demodulate it properly, okay, thank you.